Man and uh, the organizers and uh, people from in this place, thank you for invitation. And uh, uh, if you read this title, you may realize that uh, my talk will be a little bit different than uh, more relaxing than the talks that are, were presented here. And I am very keen to speak to PhD students because. Uh, they are more flexible than, uh, than the senior scientists. So, uh, few words about the place that I'm living. I'm from Poland, so this is well uh, known for the people that are living in the Europe, that Poland is in the center of the, almost in the center of the Europe. So the, the, there's the Poland and uh, the place that I'm, uh, specifically coming is is, uh, is located in the uh, Baltic Sea coast between two main cities in Poland, the Gdańsk and Szczecin. And uh, Pol Poland got four seasons. It's uh, considered as the cold country. So this is actually the view from my office in the spring, which is beautiful time and the winter. Uh, so our, our uh, Baltic Sea part is very beautiful in terms of, of the beach and uh, in terms of the view, views, nice views. And uh, But uh, in the winter time, it, it can be nasty. I'm presenting a lot of slides of the water because Part of my research is based on the water environment, so that's the justification of. So this is nasty. However, the Baltic Sea is a very good place to train sailing. Okay, if you would like to sail, just come to us. We will face very bad weather, and you may sail everywhere then in comfortable situation. Okay. A lot of trees and uh, lakes and uh, like this and like this. I did this picture myself in Polish lake, not in Australia that I lived for two years. The water is very transparent, so we are proud of extremely clean environment and we would like to protect this environment. So the Koszalin University of Technology is uh, a micro university if we compare the Chinese universities. The population of the whole city is just uh, 10,000 people. And the university is focusing on civil engineering and a little bit of electronics. So my, uh, my main uh, education as pharmacy pharmacist it not fit uh, to the university but uh, we are trying to build uh, some of the connections between the faculties there's one person who is very important for science and he was born in Koszalin he evolved involved one of the main fundamental theory in science this is the uh, Klaus he formulated the entropy concept. So this is important issue. No, unfortunately, he was German. But who, as the German, can say about the uh, order? They, they <laughs> okay. can't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he was he was uh, actually uh, German. Okay. And I have to say a little bit about my uh, supervisor because uh, all of us got the teachers. And uh, this is a very important thing to remember that uh, we are here because of our teachers. And this, uh, uh, my, my supervisor, PhD supervisor, passed away unfortunately a few years ago, but uh, he was generous in sh with sharing and exchanging new research ideas. This is very important, extremely important, and uh, I enjoyed the talks with uh, Henry. He used very uh, non-typical approach for, for the science. 
because uh, we may define this as the latter thing. Uh, universe is extremely complex, and the, the um, way to explain uh, universe is through mathematics. <coughs> and mathematics is not really compatible with our brain. So we need some new approach to understand how the universe works. And lateral thinking is one of the answers, particularly if we consider the new era of science which will be driven by uh, artificial intelligence. So 90% of scientists will uh, lose job because they can be replaced by the artificial intelligence programs. Okay, so 90%, I guess, or even more. However, if, uh, if we will introduce this such, such uh, way to do science, probably we may be competitive to artificial intelligence uh, programs. If you go to the uh, AIVA project, this is the project based on the artificial intelligence classical music. Uh, uh, there is one, uh, uh, anyone heard Aiva music? Yeah, I think I read about it. Yeah, Aiva. Uh, the previous projects were, you know, three, three seconds and that was enough. But uh, Aiva did very well. So you can listen five minutes at least, and you will not realize that this is artificial intelligence music. It did something similar with paintings, right? Exactly. With Rembrandt. We, yes, and we may de, uh, we may do the same with uh, uh, experiment or with uh, research. So the this this uh, this is the huge uh, change in science. Of course, the, the, there is uh, the second uh, type of, uh, of approach to the research as, like heuristic techniques. And Henry did both things and applied those to the, the physical chemistry uh, successfully. The second issue is that uh, as I traveled to the, some of the symposia, I bought this book. You know the TED presentations, 80 minutes presentations, very nice. Look, the first sentence, or even title, ideas are the currency of the 21st century. This is the reason that uh, scientists are not keen to exchange ideas, because they want to get the grants, and the ideas are the currency. So that's the main problem. The scientists look to be very open, but in fact they are not. So be careful with, with this. The key problems. I will introduce some of the problems that we, we have to face. Uh, large data sets, any large data sets are difficult for the humans because our brain are mainly trained to recognize faces. This is the main function of our brain recognize the face. And the second issue is that we are humans, we cannot analyze efficiently more than three factors at the same time. This is huge strong limitation in terms of modern uh, experimental data. <coughs> so the, all of the samples are, are multi-factor from nature. Example, if we consider just one variable, so each object on this picture got, is characterized by one variable, the bar length. And uh, to this, for the simplicity, consider this axis as the time, for, for example, as the time. Okay, so we got one variable, 10 objects, and time uh, axis. Try to classify the objects on this graph. Very quickly, classify the object. Okay, combine which one, which one is similar to another. Okay, it's done. 
who did this like this? The reality is that you may explain the or uh, combine all objects into just two factors. The two factors will will explain 90% of variability, and this is reality. So you can see that our brains are not prepared to analyze properly analyze the data, and this is very trivial example because we got one variable and just 10 objects. What's happened if we get more? Because the situation, the typical situation is like this. And we finally see that we cannot see anything on this graph. This is also very trivial. So the dimension like uh, 31 objects by 100 variables in terms of large data mining is uh, very trivial. But there is one uh, uh, very, very interesting technical mathematical trick, which is called factor analysis. And a special, special uh, type of factor analysis, which is called principal component analysis. Those concepts uh, were evolved by Person 100 years ago. And he, uh, you know, the Person uh, coefficient from the, the RR. Uh, this guy uh, invented the uh, system how to describe n-dimensional uh, spaces and relationships in n-dimensional spaces. So we, we may uh, use some of the programs to reduce number of variables and objects and the advantage is that uh, resulting matrices can uh, give us the main factors affecting our objects. This is a huge advantage of such approach. And I'm using this very often to uh, analyze data. The second issue is signal processing. The same problem is uh, like with the uh, large data mining. Typically, we got uh, two-dimensional objects. We are talking about uh, the object like uh, like this, okay, size like this, five by five centimeter. Microchips, microfluidic devices uh, are like this, or like this, one by one centimeter. This is easy to handle to handle by humans, okay, and uh, you can put here hundred thousand of uh, devices, okay. Uh, in very very uh, easy way, we, we may use such surface for detection in case of thin layer chromatography, which is sort of separation science device. So we got spots on the layer, and we can get the signal. We can get if we scan this way, we can see the one-dimensional signal. We may do the two-dimensional signals. And that's all, what, what we may do this. However, if we do the movie, we, we may see the movie, that means the K shots of the same picture, we change the number of uh, dimensions. And, part, and then if we apply the energy to the surface and do the movie, we can get uh, the package of the uh, of the information, and if we consider the <coughs> pixel uh, coming through all the shots, this is the voxel, okay? This is volumetric pixel. And then we may apply a lot of uh, manipulations to get the data from uh, our signal. We basically we are dealing with the contrast. However, we can do uh, Fourier sequence, uh, wavelength uh, uh, transforms, uh, and get the uh, number of uh, very interesting information from such uh, experimental data. I have to uh, focus on one kind of analysis, which is extremely sensitive. This is the correlation analysis. But the correlation is not considered as the correlation between two images is the correlation between voxels. 
if we correlate the voxels, we may get very high sensitivity. Okay, so this is the original original picture, and this is the picture after voxel uh, correlation image. Uh, the resulting uh, picture is like person coefficient. Okay, so the person coefficient, which is going from zero to one, and have a look at the intensity of the spots, you can see a lot of more information than uh, using typical Mm, typical uh, analysis. Uh, in terms of uh, analytical chemistry, because I'm focusing on analytical chemistry, uh, there is one example that we did with my colleague Professor Sushinsky. Uh, this is the original separation of fullerens, the C60 and C70 molecules. So you can see that there is almost no contrast here. Even if you improve this using uh, contrast improvement, still there, is, uh, there are missing points here. Fluorescence is also not effective enough. However, more, more effective than visible light. If we, we change our analysis to the correlation image driven by pulse thermovision, we may see all the spots and a lot of more data including the structure of this TLC plate, which is impossible to get from uh, typical uh, detection systems. Uh, because I will uh, say a little bit about chromatography, uh, I have to introduce this. The chromato separation science is about separate uh, substances using uh, liquid and stationary phase or gas and stationary phase. And there is a relationship in terms of, uh, uh, term of the description what's going on on the plate if we compare column chromatography and TLC chromatography. And th basically this is the same system, however, we may separate more efficiently by plate or column depends on the, uh, this curve. So the first uh, example of uh, non-typical approach to the experimental research uh, will come from uh, spirulina analysis. Because uh, I'm a pharmacist, I was interested in spirulina compounds. There's a huge uh, number of, of uh, <coughs> commercial products uh, from spirulina and a lot of drugs. Uh, a lot of uh, pharmaceutical formulations and uh, uh, we are interested in, uh, in the contents of low molecular mass compounds. There is a whole range, hundreds of thousands of compounds inside of civil, uh, spirulina cells. There is a number of papers that are trying to get extraction uh, conditions from such uh, uh, relatively complex material. And the uh, important issue is that uh, uh, it's not easy to get the best uh, solvent for such material. So we did some of the preliminary uh, multivariate experiments. We just inject a spirulina sample on the, on the plate and develop uh, those plates with a number of different uh, solvents then did some of uh, PCA, and what we found, it was that uh, whole solubility process is, uh, depends on just one factor, which is uh, maybe uh, not interesting itself. However, then we applied the analysis, uh, we tried to get the information which factor is uh, most important, so we, we correlate number of uh, fundamental uh, parameters like uh, uh, molar uh, ionization potential, uh, dipole moments, uh, uh, or different uh, kind of parameters. And we found that uh, paracore, which is related to, uh, elect uh, to electrons uh, is the best to 
describe what's going on in terms of the best solubility. Uh, there's one very in, in interesting issue that we found during our research. Uh, I will back to this picture. There is one outlier here, okay? The, this outlier is uh, acetonitrile. Very simple and very often used solvent for chemical analysis and biology and med med medical analysis. And he, the behavior of this compound is completely different. This is a simple molecule. We know almost everything about this molecule. But if we look at the freezing curve of methanol, which is which corresponds the structure corresponds to the acetonitrile. In methanol, we got uh, C3, uh, CH3OH. Acetonitrile is CH3CN. So the methanol, the freezing curve is like this. So we, we got uh, increased number of uh, water in, in methanol, uh, sorry, decreased number of water in methanol, the uh, freezing curve is going down. In case of acetonitrile, the situation is completely different. So we got the sort of buffering temperature, buffering uh, uh, range of methanol, uh, acetonitrile water uh, composition. And then we got this one curve. And this explains why acetonitrile is not uh, acting uh, in similar way like different organic solvents because the polarity of acetonitrile depends strongly on contents of water. So if your sample contains a little bit of water, you may change the physical and chemical properties of uh, acetonitrile. And this, can, and this phenomenon was not discovered by computation, chemis, uh, computation uh, science, it was discovered by experimental based science. So the, uh, re, um, we may change dramatically the properties of uh, separation science tools using the contents of acetonitrile. So the, there is, uh, this is the example of uh, real uh, experimental data. And uh, we apply this system and uh, PCA for identification of spirulina samples from different sources. So you may you may uh, check if the drug which is based on spirulina is made of good material or not using such analysis. Uh, I will go to different topic because this is maybe more chemical and I, will, I would like to show completely different stuff. We also were in interested in the cellulose materials which are very interesting for researchers because they are uh, bio biodegradable. <coughs> uh, cellulose is complex at any stage, okay? Because they contains the crystals and the, the structures like this. So this is very complex material. As I prepared some papers to the uh, topical issue, of chromatography, I realized that there is a huge interest in uh, microfluidic devices, paper-based devices, because of the uh, number of the work, like uh, sensors or uh, photoconductive sensors, like this flexible electronics, and this, like this. We found such paper, a uh, rapid prototyping of carbon-based chemi-resistive gas sensor on paper. Uh, in the Nature, the scientific reports, it was the paper like this, and uh, the mm, authors argue that they can produce chemi-resistors using uh, like this. This is easy to, to prepare for detection of number of different compounds. So in fact, this, this uh, sensor is also the tensor. Uh, 
it's not uh, chemical resistor, got a lot of applications. So they use different kind of uh, uh, organic liquids and prove that they can detect them. However, uh, in, uh, we discussed this with um, my, my colleagues within our group and we realized that this is completely non-realistic because they use the saturated vapor con concentration. Okay, so this is non-realistic in, in nature. So we, we try to repeat this experiment using a different experimental setup. And this is easy. You can buy the pencils and then do some, uh, some basic research on the conductivity. So the sensor looks like this. It's uh, uh, all, all, all data agreed with, uh, with the paper in a scientific report. Then I built a special uh, device to prepare unimolar uh, concentration of organic liquids. This tool is very easy also. And we did some, uh, some uh, optimization of flow rate and so on using the homogeneity of the vapor inside the tube and prepare such uh, number of, uh, of substance to be tested. But uh, we injected unimolar concentration. So each uh, concentration was similar. And we found this problem, the problem of signal processing. So the signal was very, very tiny in comparison to the background noise. It was extremely difficult to uh, denoise. However, my colleague, which, uh, which is uh, focusing on signal analysis, applied some of the wavelength uh, transform to get the, uh, the noise signal, and we got such uh, data set for all of the uh, solvents, and then have a look what happened after our uh, analysis. So this is the space, artificial space, and uh, each point correspond to the measurement point. So we may easily detect water, toluene, and the rest of the solvents. Within this data set, still we may detect some of them. Look, this ethyl acetate, this is n heptan and n hexan. Uh, so n heptan and n hexan, you cannot even detect by your nose, but you can do this using fancy on paper device. Okay, so this is very sensitive. So we try to answer the question how it works. And so far we uh, sorry, so far we did not get any clue how this uh, sensor is working because we try to uh, combine number of uh, parameters that can be important for uh, for detection, but we failed completely failed with uh, with the uh, so th this question is still open how such uh, such uh, sensor may work. And last, uh, yes, we will go to the, 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 we will change completely different uh, area. With my colleague, <coughs> Professor Jacek Katzer, uh, we tried to find the, um, because, you know, uh, within 10 years, we will see the buildings on the moon. And uh, uh, probably, uh, the next de destinations for the exploration will be Titan and uh, Enceladus on Saturn because they contain liquids. This one contains water. At this moment, there is one technology which allowed us to build something very efficiently outside of the Earth. This is the printing technology. Okay? This, is, uh, this evolved very, very quickly. And for the printing technology, we need special, special uh, steel fibers or uh, different uh, shape, different kind of uh, elements to reinforce the concrete. So the first question was, 
how to classify the fibers. Typical approach is to use the uni uh, variant sta statistical characterization. And this is not efficient to characterize the fibers. We use PCA. <coughs> and using such techniques, as you can see, we may very quickly characterize, characterize the, the fibers. And which is more important, we may say which physical chemical parameter uh, is important for such fiber. Then we uh, try to analyze the lunar soil simulants because if you want to build something on the moon, you need to test first the material. But uh, it's very uh, expensive, the moon soil, so you have to build your uh, lunar soil simulants. There is a lot of papers on this. We got also the samples from the moon explorations and uh, lunar soil simulants. So we just took took the data from both samples because th those are available in uh, through the uh, papers for simulants and for the real samples, and then did the comparison, object comparisons. And we realized that there are just few of the lunar soil simulants that can be similar to the real soil simulant. The people that did those simulants didn't realize that there is nothing to do with real, uh, real soil. So as you uh, may see, a lot of people are doing completely wrong direction in terms of uh, in terms of reality, so I will end of my talk on this because uh, the chairman indicated me the five minutes and just conclusion. Hypothesis: This driven sign of fishing trip. I guess that fishing trip is much more efficient in terms of discovery of new things uh, because you know this guy. Uh, and just read read this one. He was awarded by the Foot in Mount Aware. Okay, that was very famous uh, because he said like this one. Okay, uh, and he was right in fact because we are interested in unknown unknowns, not in known unknowns. In unknown uh, for science is most important are the unknown unknowns. If you are interested in uh, more details of my research, you may just go to Chromatographia or look uh, for the books that I uh, was the um, co-author. Next year, uh, I hope that uh, you may find this uh, CRC book, Pure and Functional Carbon-Based Nanomaterials. So, there are my uh, PhD students and collaborators, oh, this is gone. PhD students, collaborators, and a lot of people from overseas that I worked before. So thank you for your attention.